Okay, well, my personal background is professionally, I, I was military, I was in the, the Royal Navy for 21 years. I then worked in, uh, well, in industry essentially uh, for a while, but uh, after a few years I began to understand that things were not good in the UK and I began to see things and investigate things. Ultimately, that's led me over nearly another 20 years uh, to team up with a gentleman called Mike Robinson and for now 14 years we've been running a media outlet called the UK Column mm -hmm. where and I'm delighted to say that we are expanding and it's clear that our viewers and listeners are now not only the UK they're across the world that we originally started by looking at some of the issues that you've just mentioned so we were looking at at how propaganda had come into the country. We were looking at the use of, a, of applied behavioural psychology by the government. And we were looking at changes which were very serious, or we thought they were very serious. And they were particularly affecting the style of democracy. And they were also affecting our constitutional rights. And it was against that background of, of reporting that we have then encountered uh, obviously what's happened with coronavirus. And so I would say to you that our analysis of what has happened is of coronavirus is seen very much against the background of what is happening politically and in particular the use of applied behavioral psychology and propaganda. But very early on, it came to our attention that the government scientific advisory group, SAGE, had actually had uh, an internal meeting with elements of the government's behavioural insights team. Uh, the key gentleman concerned with this was, was a man called Dr. David Halpin, that's H-A-L-P-I-N. And at that meeting, which was not properly minuted, in, in a, a proper official sense, but they did put out a briefing sheet from the meeting. And in that document, which was dated, I think, the 22nd of March, 2020, uh, it admitted that uh, the SAGE team and the government's policy on coronavirus, sorry, a little bit of noise in the background, um, was going to use applied psychology in order to ramp up fear in the population, in order to get the population to adhere more closely to the government's policy over the response to coronavirus. We have the same thing. We, it's, it's called, it is, it is a leaked paper from the Secretary of the Interior, and it is now called uh, the uh, panic paper. Yes, I, I've heard about the, the paper in Germany. I haven't seen it or been able to read it in English. I'm going to suggest to you that, uh, that excuse me, that German paper would have come out of the specific uh, talks that I just referred to. So when we started to see that the British government was having these secretive meetings with French behavioural applied psychology experts, it was clear to us that this was going to be uh, rolled out in other European countries. So I was not surprised when I heard about that German document. It said that inside communities, community members were going to be used to effectively police each other. So people were going to be used um, to put pressure on their fellow community neighbours, for example, to wear a mask, to adhere to social distancing. So it was very clear in what they were talking about that they were going to use this covert applied psychology to pressurise citizens to act against one another. Madness. Yeah, yes. madness. It's madness. That's what it is. Yes, and I'm going to say to you, it's not madness. What we are facing is is calculated, and it's a mistake to call it madness, because it's very precise, it's very calculated. And we need to understand that in order to be able to deal with, with what we're facing. Right? And the other thing that happened in UK um, probably about two years ago, 
uh, originally death certificates had to be signed by two doctors. And this, within the pandemic, uh, was changed that there only had to be one signature. And constantly on the death certificates, COVID was recorded when family members said, but my father, my mother, my brother died of, died of cancer. But because they supposedly tested positive for COVID-19, that was actually recorded as the cause of death. So this is the official falsification of statistics with a direct impact on the, the health of the nation. This is calculated. And this is why I come back to the fact that, that it is not madness if you analyze very carefully the political decisions, the policies, the documents, what we are looking at is genocide. It's planned, it's premeditated. And I, I've even had a senior member of the National Health Service who has spoken to us as a whistleblower use that very term. The words were, what I have watched unfolding within the health service in the excuse me, in the UK, is genocide. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we have nurses telling us this. We have had nurses using the term genocide. I have, I have some doctors who are also using this term, but they're not using it lightly, and they're not using it because they're aware that that other individual used it. It comes out as a word when you interview them about their experiences and what they have seen.